<laughs> Anthony Hartwig here with another Living the Dream segment. We've been doing this all summer, talking to softball players that have achieved the dreams that you know high school players that we're covering are trying to get to. And we have another one. You might know her from Duke. You might know her from FAU. You might know her as a hometown hero from Tampa Bay. But wherever you know her from, it is Cam Jackson. Thank you so much, Cam, for taking the time to join us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So before we talk about all the fun stuff you've been able to do and the big stages you've been able to play on, I want to talk about the beginning. Every journey has a beginning, and just like uh, everyone else, you had a beginning too. Talk about picking up the sport of softball and, and some of the things that made you fall in love with the sport. Uh, yeah, so my dad played uh, college baseball at a Juco college in Georgia, and I think growing up, I started out at T-ball, and he was the coach, and from t-ball on i played a little bit of baseball but yeah i started off at t-ball and then i have a younger brother who's two years younger and then he got into baseball so i guess just playing together and i finally transitioned to softball but i think my dad had a big part of that because he was my coach all the way until probably like 16 or 17. we know baseball and softball have their similarities but there's a lot of differences there too so what was it like seeing your dad kind of dive into the world of softball from the baseball perspective? Um, I don't know. I thought it was almost like the same thing besides like a ball, basically. Um, I guess when you're at that young of an age, the field's the same size and everything. But I know like him and like one of my best friend's parents were the coach and they would always have like the rule book open and reading all the rules to make <laughs> sure they were doing it right. Man, what do you mean this girl can run at the pitcher before she hits? That's not <laughs> Um, <laughs> when you think about, you know, falling in love with the sport and some of the things that kind of got you hooked, what are some things that really made you latch on to softball? Um, I would say like just the friends and like all my teammates growing up, that's like all that we did, um, between soccer and softball, I played with like all my friends and most of my friends played softball. And I think I just wanted to play a team sport with all my friends so I think that's what like made me link towards it was oh my friend Natalie's doing this so I want to go do this and it's just like hanging out more with your friends and then I guess you get better and better and over time you fall in love with the game there's always a point when it goes from something you're just doing for fun or something that you like doing into something that like okay I'm good at this I can work at this I can make this into something I can go into college for When do you think that transition happened for you where you started to really hone in on your softball skills and started to really put a lot of time into it? Uh, I would say probably around like 14. Um, Like I said before, I played soccer and softball. And um, my parents were like, it's too much with like travel ball plus travel soccer. So if you want to go to college for this, you're going to have to pick one. And I chose softball at that time. And so did my friend. And we played softball and then went to high school together and played softball. So probably around 14 is when I really was like, okay, this is serious. Like I want to go to college and play softball. As soon as you make that decision, the recruiting process starts, right? So yeah. And it was crazy at my age. It was like, right. You could be recruited in eighth grade and yeah. 14 seemed a little late at that time. (laughs) I know. know. Um, What was your process like? What was it like to go through and, and try to, kind of decide what level you were at, where you wanted to go, what things you were looking for. And then we all know that you landed in Duke. So what were some things that made you want to pick uh, that place to be your home? Yeah. uh, So for me, I think it was a little scary because I played like two, like an age or like two ages up. So I was 16 playing 18 U, or like when I was 14 playing 16 U, and all my friends were committed. And one of my best friends at the time was going to Florida state and I still wasn't committed. And then that summer I tore my ACL. So then it was just really scary. Like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go to college. I don't know if I'm going to do this for real. But yeah, I did rehab. Um, I played with another girl, Christina Foreman, who played at Duke and then played at Arkansas for her grad year. And we were on the same travel ball team. And I believe Coach Young at that time was um, at a tournament looking at her and wanting to recruit her. And I happened to be playing at the same time. And it kind of just worked that way. And then I started showing up to a bunch of camps at Duke and started like falling in love with the program. Like I want to build the house and I want to start a program from not team one, but team three. Mm -hmm. So it was still really uh, early on in a program and just like laying the foundation for more girls to come. 
Yeah, for casual softball fans that don't know, I mean, Duke is a very young softball program right now. You came in in the third team in program history. And, and so I'm kind of – I've always been curious, what, what was kind of the sales pitch for that? Because, you know, you, you get recruited by Florida State or Tennessee or Alabama or et cetera. They'll go over the tradition. You know, we've been winning for a long time. This is what we have been doing. You know, we've had the same coach for all. But then Coach Young comes up and says, you know, we're, we're starting something. What was kind of the what was intriguing about that and being a part of a brand new program that was trying to build the foundation of something that can be tradition based in 20 years like those other blue bloods are? Yeah. Um, well, I think one, it's like, how do you say no to Duke? Like, how do you say no to the academics? Plus, you're like an athlete there. Like, that's crazy. Um, so I think that was like step one. And then when you step on campus, it's beautiful. It's like you're in a Harry Potter movie. But yeah, I don't know. I just think Coach Young was all in and you could show that she was so committed to a team, like not knowing how good we were going to be. And that is scary as a coach. And she took a chance on us and like a leap of faith. So I had to trust her. And I mean, it worked out. So I'd say so. I'd yeah. say it worked out for Duke. You know, they, they keep yeah. doing program first this year. Yep. Um, they, they first time going to the WCWS, your senior, well, your last year there. First time going to super regionals, all these things that they're doing to, to build on. So I'm wondering, you know, you commit to Duke and then you have a couple of years before you actually sign. What kept you kind of driven? What kept you motivated now that you, the commitment was done and the recruitment process was over? I see a lot of girls, once they hit that commitment button, it almost is really hard to save off, you know, taking their foot off the gas pedal because you work so hard to get to that point. Yeah. What kept you going and what kept you motivated once you already committed? Um, I think just doing it all your life, it, it wasn't really that hard for me. Um, mm -hmm. You wake up every day and you go work out and then you go to practice and you go to school and do it all over again. So I think doing it at such a young age and continuing to like follow that foundation, it just made it that much easier down the road. Um, obviously, like putting in like a extra work on top of that is hard. But I think over the summer, if you really want to be that good of an athlete, I think it like takes commitment and time. And I think that's what also stands out about Duke is all the girls that go there, you know, they're committed to excellence. And that's mm. that I say, that's what it would, it's all about. And, you know, the other thing about going to Duke that I love talking to, and you're going to be the second Duke player we've had on Kelly Torres was the first player that we had on this. Uh, when you go to Duke, the excellence in the classroom is way up here. Um, was that ever kind of daunting for you when you were, you know, the reality was setting in that I'm about to go to Duke, like I better step it up in the classroom or, or it's going to be a, a long four years. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, before I got there, you would, you would talk to like people all around like neighbors and they'd be like, you're going to Duke, like Duke university. And you're like, yeah, like what? <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going. And, and then when you really do get there, you're in a classroom full of, like 20 people max like it's great how small the classroom is because you really get to know your classmates but yeah you're looking around and you're like scared to ask for help sometimes because they're so <laughs> smart but yeah it, at first it was really scary um but there's so many support systems at duke for athletes it made it a lot easier and once you do go through your first year and you make more connections with the professors it does get easier and it's not as stressful but yeah it's still like I can't believe I'm at school with these people. Like they're going to be millionaires, billionaires. And you do think you're stupid, but you're not. Did you get super hard classes from the jump or did you kind of try to ease yourself into Duke education uh, in your first semester? Yeah. So I um, ended up with a degree in biology and at Duke, they really don't want you to declare your major until your sophomore year. But I, for some reason thought it would be a good idea to take like chem 101 my first semester. <laughs> And it, this was like the only classroom that I had that was big. Cause it was like a weave, a weave out course. And um, so, yeah, it was like me and another teammate and we're all like, maybe we got to switch our majors. Like, what are we getting into? But it all worked out. But yeah, that was probably like really hard. Like your freshman year, you have no idea what's going on on top of like softball and stuff. So it, it is a lot better once you have teammates in the class with you, but yeah, I should have, I should have listened to my academic advisor and, Took really easy classes my freshman year. So we'll call Kim one your welcome to Duke um, education moment. What was your welcome to college softball moment where you realized really quickly quickly that this was a different level of softball and you were in a whole new world? Uh, training camp. So January or 
yeah, so you're there for the fall and you're training, obviously you're working out and then you go home for Christmas break and you come back probably two weeks earlier than all the other students. And it's called like training camp and it's probably a week or two of just softball. And it's called like, we do like two a day. So you wake up early, go work out, you go practice for like four hours, you eat, you practice again, (laughs) and then you probably eat again and then do it all over again. And it was for like two weeks straight and you're like, holy crap, because there's no hours during training camp. It's just get what you need and get done since we're not in season and school's not in or whatever. But yeah, that was, it was a lot of running. We had a run test. Um, It was, it was nice because it was like team bonding a lot because there was no other students and nothing else to do because no other, yeah, no one was there. But yeah, training camp was pretty rough. How, how, how fast did you get acclimated to it? Like how fast do you think it took you to kind of get used to the schedule and the time management and the demands of, of being a, an athlete at that level? Um, well, so my freshman year, Coach Young made all the freshmen come up summer A. So you go with all the other freshmen and there's other teams like baseball, field hockey there. So you take one class a summer and then you work out and you do like practices, but like captain practices. So they're not real practices, just uh, here's the stadium and the captains lead you through. Of, this is what we've done in the past. And let's just start doing mechanics before we get into practice. So I think that was really helpful because although it was only one class, you're still waking up early to lift and going to a class and eating and then going to practice. So it was a lot less stressful and really chill, but you're still like starting to get on a routine, which was really nice. But I think it was still hard. It's, it's still hard transitioning from one class to, Oh, jumping into season, you have four classes and Duke before COVID didn't like allow any online classes. So you had to go to every class and coach Young's really big on that. She put school before softball. So if you have practice or, or I mean, if you have class like during practice time, you better be in class, and as soon as it's done, you got to rush over to practice, get dressed, and get ready. What was your mental approach to going into your first year of, of a softball player at that level, too? Because we all know the game is a big jump from high school to college, especially at that level. Did did you kind of prepare yourself for the the failure and the 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 jump, or did you have to acclimate to that too mentally? Yeah, I definitely think I had to acclimate to that. I didn't think it was as mentally draining and like challenging as it was sometimes, but we did have a, um, we did have a mental coach come in every month, I believe, and sat down with the team and we had talks and you could even meet like one-on-one with them if you needed, which was really helpful. But yeah, I didn't prepare at all (laughs) freshman year, but the support really did help. I'm sure every college athlete, no matter what sport they play, but especially sports like baseball and softball, where where you're going to fail more than you succeed, would tell you that there is some sort of adversity that they had to get through, uh, some point in their career in their in their college career where they had an opportunity to either quit or gas out or go to a much easier place. Um, what was that moment for you? And then what were some things that you did to get through it, get past it, and keep going? Yeah, so actually my senior year at Duke, I, um, yeah, so I tore my left labrum and that like that, that my senior year at Duke. And so I was playing through like an injury and obviously I didn't play well that year. And the year before I was all ACC team. So I came off a really good year and it just went like downhill. Like I didn't start, I was like trying to fight for a position it was really challenging. And during that year, I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm not playing my COVID year. Like, I don't want to go through this again. If I'm going to get surgery, I don't know if I'm going to be like as good as I was. Um, I don't want to like, and I didn't want to repeat the process of sitting the bench my last year. And when I could have been doing something else, I could have and been like enjoying college, like going to party, doing whatever I wanted. Um, so yeah, I was not going to play at FAU at all. And then I talked to my parents and I was just like, you know what, whatever. I'd, I'd rather regret like setting the bench than saying like, what if I did this kind of thing? So yeah, I got the surgery over summer. Um, I entered the portal 
And I knew I wanted to come closer to home being from Tampa. Um, I really wanted to go to USF, but that didn't work out. And Coach Jordan at FAU reached out to me and was like, we'd love to have you. Like, when can you come out and visit? And I did. And I was like, you know what? This is the place for me. Like, I'm going to give it a shot. And I did. And it worked out well. I, have no I think it worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, first team all AAC, AAC champions uh, for this year. I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were some of the um, – you know, things that you look back on in that FAU season that you think to yourself, like, because this happened, besides the accolades, I mean, accolades are, are obvious, but what are some things that you're like, man, I am so glad that I was able to, that I did it, that I did go through that tough time, that I did push myself to go to FAU and give myself one more year of softball? Yeah, I think it's just meeting, I think it was so crazy, like, that was the last year of the COVID girls, almost, maybe this year, if you have a sixth year, but that was like the last year. So I went to school and there were three other like amazing transfers that I became best friends with Presley, Meg and Gabby. And I think just building a relationship with them has like been like the best thing that's happened that I was there since I was there. Um, and it wasn't even like on the field stuff. It was like, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the movie. Let's go do this. And it was almost just like, I was not even in school. Like it wasn't even stressful. It was hanging out with like my best friends there. And I only knew them for, not even a year at that time right. but yeah i just say meeting them and just like having a great time at the beach it was such a great location and my parents would be able to like were able to come to every game since it was only like a four-hour drive so because of covid so many players like you get to go to a place for four years and then spend a fifth year somewhere else for one year What's the mindset when you know, like, you know, going in, I'm only going to be here for one season. And like, do you try to still, you know, um, leave a legacy at that place and say, Hey, I have one year to kind of help this program the best way I can. How do you handle knowing beforehand that you, you got one year here? Yeah, I think it's really hard um, being a transfer, especially a fifth year going into a, a program and them trusting you and you trying to lead by like example, like you're the older one here. Um, it's like challenging and also like scary because you don't want to come off as like, oh, that teammate's so rude and I don't want to cuss here, but she's being a B word. And <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't want to come off like that because you're, you're there for one year. You're just trying to make the team better and the program better. But I think you just have to help guide. And it is very challenging, especially – coming from Duke where we, one of our like core values was hold each other accountable. And if we held someone accountable, we wouldn't take it personal, but going to a new school and doing that, I think that was the most difficult part where I found it challenging for myself to speak up and just like hold people around me accountable because of like what I said earlier, it was just, you don't want to come off as that kind of teammate, you know, but yeah, I still had the same standards as, I almost like wanted to prove myself that I was, I knew I was this good. And I knew last year was just a fluke or whatever. And yeah. When you think about your career as a whole and, and things you're the most proud of that you were able to do, uh, what things do you, do you kind of put on that to say, I'm proud that I was able to get this accomplished, whether it be a stat, whether it be in a, an, an achievement, whether it be an accolade, what, what are some things that you think, I am so proud of myself that I was able to do this. Um, I would say winning the ACC championship. That was our first one at Duke ever for the softball team. Um, hosting regionals twice, I believe, and hoping, hosting supers once. Um, and then obviously winning. We were the first softball team or the first American softball for FAU because that was our first year in the American Conference. But I think just like – like, laying the foundation like oh yeah i was a part of that team when we won the first acc or we won the first american softball at fau and we were the first team to host this and i think just moments like that you know everyone comes on this and say you know they, they're preparing themselves for the one day where softball is going to end and for you you've taken your last year at fau and uh, your playing career at least uh, i don't know maybe you're not over but um what what do you do now that um, it's it's different now that, that you don't have softball as much in your life anymore? What 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 do you do identity wise uh, to to make yourself not just a softball player? Yeah, I 
I don't know yet. It ha I don't think it's like hitting me yet, or maybe it has, and I'm just not that sad about it. I don't know. It's kind. Of, it is weird because it still feels like summer where maybe I could go back to school in a month or so and start soft all like all over again. But I don't know. I'm currently applying to PA school right now, so that's keeping mm -hmm. me really busy. And I've been going to the beach a lot, so I think just keeping myself busy has got my mind away from softball and that identity piece but yeah i don't know i'm not that sad <laughs> for right now what, what do you think you're gonna miss the most about it like what do you think you're gonna say man i i can't believe that this isn't in my life anymore and then flip side what's something that you're like okay my life has had enough of that um definitely missing the teammates and just like spending time together out like outside softball um I'm actually going on a trip with Kelly and Carol and Christina soon. So like, we'll see each other like a lot, but it is, it is a lot different than like going to each other's apartment every night and just hanging out. I think those will be like the moments I'll miss the most. And then moments I will not miss is having to wake up really early for lift and being told we have to be here, here, and here at this time and mm -hmm. delayed flights. Like traveling is the worst with big groups and running through the airport with our suitcases and stuff. That was, I will not miss that at all. Yeah, you have to be so bummed that uh, <laughs> you're missing the AAC, when, ACC when they have to go to California now. And yeah, oh my God. Play Stanford and Cal and, <laughs> you uh -huh. know. So bummed, right? <laughs> um, one of the things that we like to do at the end of this is go full circle, give one last nugget of advice. And I like to ask uh, the athletes, what is something that now you know after your college career that you wish you knew before you stepped on campus? So what's something that you think, man, if I knew that as a freshman when I stepped on, maybe my career or my experience would have been even better? I would say working on the mental side of softball um, especially my freshman and sophomore year, I was always like, if I put in the extra work, like it's going to show, it's going to show. But I think softball is such a failure sport that people lose track of the mentality piece. And if you have confidence, well, we always say confidence is key. And if you have confidence or you can fake your confidence, but yeah, I would say work on the mentality piece, whether it's like go see a coach for help or, listen to podcasts or I don't know, whatever you need to do. Like I know Kelly meditates and she started doing that her senior year and it really helped her. Um, but yeah, I feel like if I was more confident and I worked on that throughout my freshman, sophomore year, I'd be a lot better than I was. Shout out to the speakeasy podcast. We'll yeah. Kelly a shameless plug right there. <laughs> um, one of the things we also do with these interviews before we let you go is we give you the chance to, Take the spotlight off yourself. We've been talking about you for, for the last 20 minutes. I uh, want to give you the time to kind of shine the light on your support system, the people that got you to where you are, the people you wouldn't be where you are without. So I want to give you as much time as you want to, to give out your thank yous and your shout outs. Yeah, uh, obviously I would thank my parents. Without them, I wouldn't play softball. My dad coached me for forever. Um, my mom running me back and forth from softball practice. Um, obviously coach young for taking a chance on me and giving me a scholarship to Duke, um, coach Jordan and coach Taylor at FAU for finding me in the portal and bringing me home to Boca, all my teammates, friends. I don't know. I could, I probably have like a endless amount coach bloomer at Arizona now. Um, I don't know. We still text all the time. I think he was a great coach and just a great like person to have by your side. But yeah, teammates, always being there to talk about anything softball non-softball stuff mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> all right kim we want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us and be with us tell, talking to us about your journey we appreciate it so much wish you the best of luck at whatever your future endeavors are and we hope that we get to talk to you in real real soon thank you